Welcome to the Biblioteca Orientalis. Today we present a book that is just released. The title is Housing and the City, Love versus Hope by Daniel Solomon. Daniel Solomon is one of the founders of the new urbanist movement in America. The book has different traits, but the connection is given by the title itself. Hope is the city of the hope and uh, love is the city of love. Hope is the city of the modern movement. The modern movement that had, had substituted the continuous stratification of the, of the urban fabric of the city and the history with the rational models. It failed. It, cre it created a disruptive city and it produced social alienation. City of love, on the contrary, is the, con the continuous city, the city of the stratification the city of the people. To give you an idea of what in, is intends for uh, continuity, I will check page under 16. The piece is called Morning in Prati. Uh, our protagonist uh, uh, is ready to leave the apartment in early in the morning. He closes the apartment, he, he goes into the uh, elevator. He meets a lady that is going to the shopping uh, market and then he goes out, he reaches the bar where he has a very good cappuccino with cornetto. And uh, of course he has a, a dialogue and a, a discussion with the barman and with uh, the clients that are there. Then he leaves, he goes to the, to the shop, he buys toothpaste. And then uh, he continues to walk in, in the city and uh, he sees his favorite restaurant he, he asked the, the owner, is there fresh fish today? And uh, he says, yes, we have clams. Okay, he says, today at one, we are two people. Finally, he goes to the, to the school. Total distance covered since leaving the apartment, 350 meters. Total elapsed time, 27 minutes. Conversations, four as participant, eight as over air. Such is the life in the, in the continuous city. Rome occupies an important, an important place in, uh, in the book, and uh, it is particularly interesting for me as a, as a Roman. I have to say that uh, I read it with interest and uh, I was uh, hit by uh, a detail. Solomon points uh, a very specific building in Rome that I never really noticed. It is the anagraphy actually, made by an interesting architect whose name is Guidi. And he says that uh, it is interesting, the building, because it is not uh, invading the context. It tries to establish a dialogue with uh, the archaeology that is in front of it. It uh, tries to pass unnoticed, actually. And then uh, I realized that uh, the, the best uh, contribution of the American uh, architects to our culture, architectural culture, is the fact that uh, they are pragmatic people, they are not dominated by the ideologies and so on. What means this? It means that uh, we were also educated as students of architecture to consider all the fascist architecture as bad. Bad because fascist. Until American architects, and most of them they were uh, host in the American Academy of Rome, they started to say, wait, guys, but uh, the church of Piazza Euclide by Brasini is wonderful. And after that, I started to look at the uh, architecture of the 30s and 40s with a different attitude. And I learned to distinguish, not between uh, red or black architecture, but between good and bad architecture. Core of the book is a warning that he addresses to his friends of the new urbanist movement. He starts with uh, a, an, an opposition between two terms that uh, he calls with the Greek term, metis on one side and episteme on the other. Metis means intelligence, or means uh, the intelligence that is uh, flexible, intelligence that goes from the past to the present into the future, 
that is also smart. It is the intelligent intelligence of Ulixus, for instance. The episteme is the knowledge that has a scientific basis, the knowledge that is scientifically guaranteed. The new urbanism was born and created as a typical expression of Metis. It was based on pragmatical and it was uh, dominated by a pragmatical issue. Uh, enough with the sprawl of the peripheries, enough with the federal government projects for low-cost housing that produced just uh, slabs one after the other and uh, created disruptive cities. But pragmatically, the new urbanists never used the universities and the academy. They addressed directly the organization of the people, the municipalities. Finally, they were able to address the government. In a certain way, Solomon and uh, Colin Rowe, they see a, a change in the, in the movement. And they warn the, all of them. They say, they see that uh, the new urbanist now is uh, trying to find a sort of consolation in uh, methods, in the systems that guarantee through measurement, they guarantee norms and universal values. In a certain way, they accuse the new urbanism of moving slowly from Metis to Episteme. And in particularly, they uh, point the finger into the, the new wave of the so-called uh, uh, smart codes. The illusion that uh, applying certain smart codes, we can guarantee that uh, a building, that a, an environment, and uh, that um, the city are sustainable. Seems that uh, the new urbanist is uh, forgetting that uh, the uh, sustainability was not an issue in the city of the continuity because uh, all the uh, necessities you know, were dominated by the surviving and therefore sustainability was implicit in every operation of architecture. It was also easily achieved because uh, all the architecture was local. While nowadays with the globalization, you know, this sustainability becomes a product. It is a product that is guaranteed through norms, through measurement, but in reality doesn't work that way.